Hey, Adam Wrigley here from Bots FC, coming to you from the robot room for part two of our Building Shatter 2020 video series. On the last episode of this series, we went into building a billet aluminum frame and how we were going to start doing that. This week, we're going to take a step back and talk to you about why we're doing that. We got a lot of questions. Why would we switch from a titanium frame to a billet aluminum chassis? And so that's what we're going to be diving into on this episode. starting a redesign of anything, it's important to look at your priorities. For us, when designing a BattleBot, we have three main priorities. The first, of course, is performance in the arena. That's the most important thing the robot has to work. Secondly, we look at repairability in the pits. If the robot gets completely destroyed after winning a fight, that doesn't really help us if we can't put it together for the second fight. And last, cost. We have to be able to afford to build the robot. Up until now, Every BOTS FC robot above three pounds has been based on the design philosophy of a base plate and frame members bolted to it. It's been simple to design, simple to build, and simple to repair. Now, while this design has been working well for us for years, it definitely has some disadvantages. Like, say, when you get hit from behind by a charging 250 pound Brazilian bull. So let's take a closer look at the frame design and see exactly why that hit was particularly bad. One of the main benefits of a frame-based design with bolted together components is that if a single part breaks, you simply replace that part. This makes it easier to repair and lower cost than working on a single welded together or machined frame, or at least that's the thought. Now for a while that seemed to be true. On our smaller robots and even our previous heavyweight blue, when we get hit and the side and the front, a single part would break at the connection point. So the connections were weak points between the different frame members. They'd break there, meaning only one part would break, not the parts it was bolted to. We'd replace that part and move on. But there's an issue with that, it's a trade-off. If the connection points are too weak, the entire robot can come apart into multiple pieces. When we made the transition to BattleBots with Shatter, we didn't want that to happen. So in order to avoid our robot falling apart, we strengthened each one of the joints between the different frame members. We switched from simply bolting everything together to creating an intricate system of tongues and grooves, turning the whole frame into a sort of three-dimensional puzzle and creating a frame that was really strong even before we bolted it together. Instead of simply having bolts take the force, the frame members themselves transferred the force through these joints. So let's talk a little bit about our fight against Minotaur and how exactly that hit affected this type of frame design. So Minotaur hit the corner of our front wedge, the corner that's conveniently missing, and dissipated the force throughout the entire frame due to our new interlocking frame system, which seems good. In fact, it did keep the frame in one piece. If we had landed right side up, we would have kept going. But the problem was that as it dissipated all the force throughout the frame, although it stayed together in that fight, multiple frame members were bent, twisted and cracked and would not have been good for putting in to the beginning of a new fight. When we got back to the pits and took it apart, we actually realized the whole front was bent. It's several degrees off from flat and this is a half inch thick piece of titanium. When we started to take everything apart, we realized that it was stuck together. So we lost the repairability in the pits, one of the main benefits of the frame design. When we got home after the event, we started running the numbers to try and figure out just how much that hit from Minotaur cost. And it turns out it was quite expensive. We have a great relationship with our titanium sponsor, TMS Titanium. Titanium is an amazing material, but no matter how you slice it, it's a premium material and it should be used in the right ways. When we ran the numbers, we realized we weren't using it in the right ways because from the cost of material to the cost of manufacturing, the subset of parts that Minotaur had broken in that hit were more than an entire aluminum machine billet frame. And if it costs more and it's harder to repair, then what's the point? Now we don't have the facilities to create a single welded titanium frame and we certainly don't have the money yet to build a titanium billet frame. But when we looked into aluminum billets, we looked at the performance of Duck, and Duck is extremely reliable in the arena, partly because of its solid machined aluminum billet frame. And if Duck can get that sort of performance out of a machined aluminum billet, then we thought maybe we can get somewhere close to, at least as good as what we're getting out of this titanium frame right now. 
Now we still use a lot of titanium in our hammer, in our hammer arm, and our wedges on the front, but we're gonna switch the frame to an aluminum billet. The frame isn't just about material strength. That's really only about half of it, if that. The other half is what shape is your frame in? How modular is it? How can you mount the components in there? And the shape of the frame is very different from a titanium base plate design versus a single aluminum billet. One of the big benefits of our design last year was our blade of armor. This is one of the first times we were using it on such a large scale versus some of our other robots, but it worked really, really well. In our fight against Minotaur, all they were able to do was create Minotaur-shaped rounded divots in the plastic up until they got around the corner and hit the corner of the metal frame, which stuck out past it. With this new aluminum billet design, we can be much more modular in our plastic ablative armor strategy, allowing us to cover the entire front in ablative armor without any corners of the wedge sticking out, or swap that for wedgelets or fangs or any combination we want. But there's a lot of other benefits of a billet design outside of just more modular ablative armor. The inside of the robot is completely redesigned. Instead of mounting plates to put things in the right spot, we machine everything into a single aluminum part. This drastically reduces the part count of the robot by dozens of pieces, and each one of those eliminating a potential failure point. The last thing we had to do was find someone with a mill large enough to machine a gigantic block of aluminum in the size of shatter, and also with the skill to do it in a way that is good enough to put in the battle box. And that's when we found Prismir, our newest sponsor who helped us make this season's robot happen. Thanks for watching this episode of Building Shatter 2020, and join us on the next episode where we dive into the actual billet frame fresh in the metal in front of us. Bots FC and Shatter are brought to you by Prismere, TMS Titanium, and Maxamp Batteries, and viewers like you.